Yesterday may have been one of the biggest days in artificial intelligence news since the beginning. There were numerous announcements and we're gonna cover everything from yesterday and the past few days. There's so much stuff, let's get right into it. First, Microsoft released Agents. They've now released previews of their agent studio called Copilot Studio, where you can create agents, run agents, and basically put agents into every aspect of your Windows environment. And they are betting big on it. And there's a few interesting bits from the announcement. Let me read a few parts. The ability to create autonomous agents with Copilot Studio will be in public preview next month. So not quite released yet, but very soon. Then they're introducing 10 new autonomous agents in Dynamics 365 to build capacity for every sales, service, finance, and supply chain team. So they are building agents for the enterprise environment. And based on this blog post, based on a keynote Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft just gave, based on another post that Microsoft just released, they are betting that agents are going to infiltrate every aspect of the corporate environment. They believe that millions of agents are going to enter the workforce in the next few years. Years. And I kind of agree with them. It's probably going to be pretty simplistic at first, a lot of basic automation, but as the models get better, as the agentic frameworks get better around the raw intelligence, we're just going to see these agents become more and more proactive rather than just being reactive and doing the task that is assigned to them in that moment. But not everybody thinks the Microsoft announcements are awesome. In fact, Mark Benioff has been flaming Microsoft about all of their launches. And if you're not familiar, Mark Benioff is the CEO of Salesforce. He definitely has a very strong personality. And if you remember way, way, way back, the beginning of Salesforce started with a very famous motto, no software. Previously, all software was delivered on-prem and you would install it and it would become stagnant. And he was really one of the original people to bring software to the cloud, SaaS. And he had this famous pin where it was exactly like this, but rather than saying Copilot, it said software. But now he's using it again to say Copilot. Look at how aggressively he is going after Microsoft. Microsoft rebranding Copilot as agents, that's panic mode. Let's be real. Copilot's a flop because Microsoft lacks the data, metadata, and enterprise security models to create real corporate intelligence. Now, that's not really true. Microsoft has all of the data. They are in essentially 98% of all enterprise companies right now. Every business uses Microsoft in some way. So they have the data and to say that they don't have the security, maybe, but really they have the talent to build the security if they don't already have it, which is up for debate. And he's calling it Clippy 2.0. And I think that's hilarious. I really actually love this corporate jabbing, even though it's all puffery and Mark Benioff might not actually believe the things he's saying. And of course, he's coming up with competing products with Agent Force. So you know, as soon as Copilot Studio comes out, I'm gonna play around with it. I'll let you know how it is. Next, IBM has released multiple open source, open weight models to the world. I was just in New York last week visiting IBM. They showed me a bunch of previews of these announcements and now they're here. So we have Granite 3.08B and 2B. We also have a mixture of experts version of the Granite model. And again, completely open source, completely open weight, Apache 2.0 license. They also have a new technique to add knowledge to these core models that isn't really rag and isn't really fine tuning. It's somewhere in between. And I have an entire video coming out going over the Granite model, going over all of these techniques coming soon. Next, of course, the biggest news from yesterday, Anthropic released Claude 3.5 Sonnet new, the new version. They also announced Claude 3.5 Haiku, which is their newest small model, but better than Claude 3.0 Opus, which is kind of nuts to think about. Opus was their biggest model. And 3.5 Sonnet new is performing extraordinarily well. If you haven't already seen my video about it, check it out. I'll drop a link in the description below. I also did a full test of Claude 3.5 Sonnet new. Alex is putting the final touch on the edits and we should release that in the next day or so. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you can see that video and see how this new awesome model does. And the most compelling announcement from yesterday from Anthropic was the computer use tool, which is absolutely mind blowing. Basically, it's Anthropic's attempt to give these AI models the ability to control your computer. We've already seen open source projects attempt to do it like Open Interpreter and a few others, but it hasn't always worked well. And now Anthropic's giving it a try. They have caveated with it is experimental and it makes mistakes. And they've actually shown examples of weird behavior, like when the model all of a sudden stopped doing what it was tasked to do and started researching Yellowstone out of nowhere. 
Kind of cool, kind of weird. So it's an API, you can try it out already. I haven't created a video about it yet, but if you wanna see a tutorial or if you just wanna see me play around with it, let me know in the comments. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Vulture. Reap the benefits of the world's largest independent cloud provider when you bring your GPU workloads over to Vulture. They have the latest NVIDIA GPUs spanning 32 locations across six continents. Vulture delivers industry-leading price-to-performance and serious accessibility and reliability. Vulture's global, fully composable cloud infrastructure moves your applications closer to your users and frees you from vendor lock-in, allowing you to bring your own network working in database solutions. And if you need to scale beyond just a single cluster, Vulture's Kubernetes engine allows you to take full control over your deployment, offering up a 100% free control plane. So if you're tired of waiting for GPUs from other providers, make sure to use Vulture. You can deploy at any scale immediately, and they have H100s, L40s, and more available right now. And you can get a fraction of a card or fully dedicated bare metal systems, which gives you full control over your hardware and your throughput. They also have one-click installation of all the applications you might need for advanced machine learning workloads, allowing you to get up and running in minutes, not hours. So experience the Vulture difference. Don't get bogged down by severe wait times or limited locations. Try it free today with a $300 credit for your first 30 days when you visit getvulture.com slash Berman. And make sure to use code Berman300 at checkout to get that credit. Thanks again to Vulture for sponsoring this video. Next, last week, Meta released a ton of open source projects. I continue to be impressed with Meta's open source contributions. So here are all of the features. Segment Anything 2.1, if you haven't already seen that, it was out. You could basically take any image or video, click on it, and it automatically will segment anything in the image. So if you wanna take a person out of the image, if you wanna take a balloon or a building or anything at all, it's so simple to do and highly accurate. Then they also released Spirit LM, which is an open source language model for text to speech. And then they also released a bunch of highly technical projects aimed at making training easier, making inference faster, and so on. So definitely check it out. I'll drop the link to this blog post in the description below. Next, former CTO of OpenAI, Mira Marathi, fresh off just leaving OpenAI, is already rumored to be raising a bunch of money and starting a new company and hiring people. The talks are in the early stages and Mira Marathi's new venture could raise over 100 million given her reputation and the capital needed to train proprietary models. And so, of course, she's building proprietary models she might build products on top of those models. But look, if anyone has the knowledge to do it, it's definitely the former CTO of OpenAI. And she has the reputation to hire the best people, raise a ton of money. So you know what? I'm all for it. The more competition, the better. Next, a Chinese copycat company of the Optimus robot has released a new video and a new humanoid robot that seems to be pretty good. It looks a little bit awkward at times, and it's definitely not as smooth as the Optimus robot. But cool nonetheless, and again, the more competition, the better. Now, a lot of people are saying this is almost an identical copy of the Optimus robot. It definitely looks pretty similar, but I don't know if it's a copy necessarily. Plus, the Optimus robot hasn't been around that long. This company hasn't been around that long. So the idea that they maybe stole secrets and then reproduced it in such a short period of time seems unlikely to me. But you know what? Again, I love humanoid robots. I love all the progress and good for this company. Next, Stability AI released Stable Diffusion 3.5, the new version of their text-to-image generation model. They have Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large and Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large Turbo. And they also said they're going to release a medium-sized version on October. 29th. Now, the great thing about Stable Diffusion, it's open source. You can download it, you can run it on your computer, and anytime a company contributes to the open source community, I am very thankful to them. So here are some examples. These people look incredible. They look real. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And the light is great. The hair is fantastic. Everything looks right. Now, obviously there are no hands in these photos, so that's really the seemingly hardest thing for AI to get right. Here are some other examples. This is obviously a piece of art. This looks like a pretty realistic mug, although the handle of the mug looks a little awkwardly positioned, and then another piece of art right there. And you can access these models through the Stability AI API, through Replicate, through Comfy UI locally on your computer, and from Deep Infra. 
And if that's not enough, Ideogram released a brand new feature called Ideogram Canvas. It's basically like having an infinite canvas board. You start with an image and you can keep adding to it or adding around it. And yeah, it just seems really cool. Bring your face or brand visuals to Ideogram Canvas and use industry leading magic fill and extend to blend them with creative AI generated content. So it has a brand new interface. Here's what it looks like. You can generate images, select the images, expand on them, add to them it's really cool here's what magic fill looks like so you can take an image you can select part of it and basically change it to be anything that you want here is extend which is an out painting tool so again you take the image and then you can add anything you want around it and andre karpathy says love it eager to try and i am as well i can't wait to try this next lm studio released another awesome update 0.3.5 and now it has headless mode. So very similar to how Olama works where there's basically no interface. You get the interface with LM Studio, but then you can essentially make it disappear and just use it in your taskbar, for example. And it's just an API at that point. So if you're a developer, that is perfect for you. You know I love LM Studio. I'm an investor in LM Studio and I really do use it all the time. Here you can minimize to the system tray so you don't have to keep the UI open if you don't want to. And again, that is perfect for development efforts. Next, one thing the CEO of Perplexity, Aravind, said that they are adding in the ability for their models to think, and most likely they're using the O1 model now. And so if you're doing deep research or anything requiring that level of intelligence, which you know how I feel about that, you can obviously use that feature now, the thinking feature. So it is a reasoning powered search agent. That is what they're calling it. But not only that, now that Claude 3.5 Sonnet new is out, they have it available. If you're a pro user in Perplexity, you can use that new model. And of course, I turned it on. I really don't see much of a difference between the models in Perplexity. Perplexity usually is just really good, and I don't care about which model it's using, but it's cool to be able to try it out nonetheless. And one thing that's super fascinating to me, and I don't really understand how they do it, is how do they just add these models with no issues? The day that the model's announced, they have it available in Perplexity. How do they not have any issues? How do they not have to redo the prompting or the caching or anything else? It just seems like they're ready to go and whatever they've built, it's a very robust system. Next, we have a brand new open source text to video model. It is called Mochi One and is by Genmo. I think it's Genmo, Genmo, Genmo AI, Genmo, whatever. And so it looks really good and everything stays consistent and the physics looks good. And I haven't played around with it more than just looking at the demo videos, but if you have, let me know what you think in the comments below. It's open source, so you can technically download it and get it running on your own computer, which you know I love. And if you wanna try it, you can try it right now for free. And of course, here's the model available on GitHub if you wanna download it and play around with it. And another one, Runway has come out with a brand new feature. Now Runway is not open source, but it's still cool nonetheless. They just introduced Act One, which is a new way to generate expressive character performance inside Gen 3 Alpha using a single driving video and character image. Basically, you take your face or a video, anything about yourself, and then you can use text to video to overlay on top of it, and you're basically animating the character. Very similar to how Gollum was portrayed by a real human, but they needed a ton of technology with all of this face tracking and all of this really expensive technology. But now you just need a video of yourself and that's it. So really the cost to create incredible videos is coming down drastically. So very cool, congrats to Runway on this launch. Next, a quick story, XAI finally has an API available and it's pretty competitive pricing. If you like the Grok models, definitely try it out. We know we're getting another Grok model very soon and it has a single model, the Grok beta, priced at $5 per million input tokens and $15 per million output tokens. So if you're a developer and you need another model in your quiver of models for your AI application, definitely check this out. Next, and I love all this generative AI coming out right now, Eleven Labs just released the ability to describe a voice and then you can use the voice with a script. So rather than having to clone an existing audio file or voice file, you basically just describe what you want and then you can use it. So here's an example, a large Yeti with a deep rumbling voice. Let's listen. I have guarded these sacred peaks since before your ancestors first dreamed of climbing them. Here's a scary witch with a hushed voice. The moon whispers secrets tonight. The stars have told me of your fate. 
So again, really awesome. The amount of creative tools that people are getting today is going to allow anybody to create incredible movies, TV shows, podcasts. It's just such an exciting time to be a creative person. So that's it for today. Those are all the stories. It's only Wednesday as I'm recording this. So who knows what's going to happen the rest of the week. Maybe I'll create another news video this week because this week has been absolutely bonkers. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.